Happy Bible class day, guys. Hope you guys are doing good today. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. We might get some rain a little bit later today, but it's not raining right now. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy you came to be with us, uh, with me uh, on Bible class time today. So, what you're supposed to have, what are you supposed to have? You're supposed to have your Bible. So if you don't have your Bible, go get it, okay? Go get your Bible. And we're gonna do some review first. I'm gonna ask you some questions and we're gonna do our memory work to see if you've been working on it and uh, see if you remember some things, okay? So, I hope you're back by now. If you're not, mama can pause or dad can pause the video for you. Let's do this first. This is a memory verse that we're working on, okay? It, remember I said it's called the golden rule. Sometimes it's referred to as the golden rule, okay? Let's say it together. Therefore, Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophet, prophets. And do you remember where it's found? It's found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Right? Matthew 7, 12. Is Matthew in the Old Testament or the New Testament, guys? Is Matthew in the Old or the New Testament? Matthew's in the New Testament. It's the very first book of the New Testament, isn't it? Okay, good job on that. We also are working on our 12 apostles. You should have something that looks similar to this. It may, it's probably like this though, that maybe you have on your refrigerator or in your room somewhere. Yeah, it has a magnet on the back of it where you can hang it up somewhere if you'd like to do that. Um, but these are our 12 apostles. And do you remember the very first lesson that we had this time? We were talking about Jesus selecting the 12 apostles. Yeah. Um, so let's sing them. Okay, it's a song. So let's sing them. I'm going to hold it up close so you can see it. Jesus called them one by one. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Next came Philip, Thomas too. Matthew and Bartholomew. James, the one they call the less, Simon, also Thaddeus, the twelfth apostle Judas made, Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them, and they all followed him. Did you sing it with me? know it, don't you? You already know that song. So this is something really easy for you, isn't it? I know, Miss Beth's giving you easy things to do, but that's okay. That's okay. You guys are so smart, you already know them. And let's work on our books of the New Testament. Remember, we're still working on those. We're learning these. I'm getting, let's see, I'm getting that a glare on it. Let me see if I can tilt it where I don't have a glare. There we go. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letter to the Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. How many of you got them all? Raise your hand if you got them all. Did you get them all? Good job. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a pat on the back. Great job. I'm very proud of you for doing that. We have one more thing in our memory work that we're working on. Let me move these things out of the way over here. There we go. It's your flip chart, your books of the New Testament flip chart. So pull that out, okay? Should be a little orange book with a, a, a blue, orange paper with a blue book on it. And it says books of the New Testament, okay? You lay yours flat on the table. Miss Bev is gonna lay hers in her hand like this so you can see me flip the pages, all right? Okay. So, it says books of the New Testament. How many books in all, guys? How many books are there in the New Testament? 
27. That's right. I want you to answer out loud when I ask questions, okay? You just answer out loud right there where you are in your living room or in your kitchen or wherever, okay? How many authors are there of the books of the New Testament? How many? Right, there are eight. The first four books of the New Testament are what? Matthew, say them with me, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do you remember what those are called? The first four books of the, of the New Testament are called the Gos Gospels. Good job, good job. The first book, Matthew, do you remember who wrote Matthew? Yeah, Matthew wrote Matthew. Did you know that he has another name? I don't know that I ever told you this, but he has another name. His other name is Levi, okay? We have a Levi here at Kelly Spring Road, don't we? Gabriel's little brother's name is Levi. Matthew's name was also Levi. How about that? So turn the page. Then we have Mark. Who wrote Mark? Matthew wrote Matthew. Mark wrote Mark. Luke wrote Luke. What was Luke's job? What was his job? He was a doctor. Yeah, Luke was a doctor, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John is the fourth book of the Gospels. And who wrote John? Do you remember who wrote John? Yeah, John. Matthew wrote Matthew. Mark wrote Mark. Luke wrote Luke. And John wrote John. And do you remember what kind of job John had? John was a fisherman. He fished. Yeah, he caught fish for, a, for his job, okay? And then we have the book of Acts. We talked about the fact that Acts is, is a book about uh, things about the church when the church began and things that the apostles did. The book is sometimes called Acts of the Apostles, and that's, that's one thing that we're going to be talking about before long are some of the things that the apostles did, okay? So that's in the book of Acts, okay? And then we have the book of Romans. Who wrote Romans? Who wrote Romans? Do you remember who wrote Romans? Who wrote? It's the first book of 13 that this same man wrote. He wrote a lot of the books in the New Testament. Do you remember his name? His name is Paul. So Paul wrote Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and then we get to a question mark. Why do we get to a question mark? Why is this question mark here? The question mark is there because we do not know who wrote the book of Hebrews, okay? Hebrews is the next book. But we don't know who wrote it, so Miss Beth just put a question mark there, okay? And then we have the book of James, okay? James, who was Jesus' brother, okay? And he wrote, James wrote the book of James. And then we have 1 Peter. Who do you think wrote 1 Peter? Peter, right? 2 Peter, who do you think wrote 2 Peter? Peter. First and second and third John. Do you know who wrote first and second and third John? They were written by John. That's right. They were written by John. And then we have Jude, who was written by Judas. And then we have Revelation. Okay, and Revelation was also written by John. So remember we talked about the fact that John wrote, I think, five books. He wrote John, he wrote 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, and he wrote Revelation also. So John wrote five. How many did Paul write? How many? Thirteen. Paul wrote 13 of the books of the New Testament. Okay? All right. So we have some words for our word ball today. We're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about a centurion. Have you ever heard that word before? Centurion? That's a, that's a long word, isn't it? It's kind of a hard word even for Miss Bev to say. Centurion, okay? And a centurion is a soldier. I'm going to show you a picture. Where did Miss Bev put it? Let me see where I put it. Here it is, right here. Do you see this? 
This is a centurion, okay? He's a soldier, isn't he? But he's not just any soldier. He's a, he's a leader of soldiers, okay? He is a leader of 100 Roman soldiers, okay? That's what a centurion is. This is our word, centurion. So we're going to talk about a centurion today. And we're going to talk about the word paralyzed. Paralyzed. Um, paralyzed usually means that someone can't walk, that they're unable to walk. It just means that whatever part of their body that, they're, that we're talking about, that they don't have any feeling in it. If someone is paralyzed in their legs, it means they don't have any feeling in their legs and their legs don't work anymore. If someone is paralyzed in their arms, it means that they don't, they don't have any feeling in their arms anymore and, the, and their arms don't work and their hands don't work. They can't pick things up. If someone um, is paralyzed, sometimes someone will be in a really bad accident, a car accident, or they'll get hurt really badly some way and they're paralyzed from their waist all the way down to their toes. That means that they can't feel any part of their body down here. The only thing that they can feel is, is their face and their head. And so they don't have any use of their arms or they don't have any use of their legs. That's what paralyzed means, okay? So we're gonna talk about someone today who is paralyzed. And we're gonna talk about a servant. This word is servant. Have you ever heard the word servant before? You ever heard the word servant before? Servant just means a servant is a person, okay? A servant is a person who serves someone else. And it usually is somebody who's working in somebody else's home. And that person in the home is their, their kind of their boss, their master. That's what a servant is. Usually, it, usually it's in the home or around the home. If uh, sometimes people have someone living in their home with them that works for them in their home and they're their servant, they cook for them, they clean for them, they do things like that for them, um, or, or sometimes they will work outside for them. So we're going to talk about someone today who was a servant in our Bible lesson. Okay, let me move those over and I will put those on the word wall after we do our Bible class this morning, okay? Do you remember, let's go over this real quick. Our first lesson was about Jesus selecting some men who were gonna be his special helpers. Do you remember that? Yeah, Jesus selected some men who were gonna be his special helpers. How many did he select? Do you remember how many? How many? Say it out loud. 12, yeah, 12. He selected 12 men, and what were those men called? that were going to be his special helpers. They were called his apostles. Good job, guys. They were called his apostles. And then last week, we talked about Jesus preaching or teaching up on a mount. Do you remember what, do you remember what we said a mount was? It's just a high hill. It's kind of a high hill. So Jesus went up on this mount to preach and to teach. And he told the people some things um, that they needed to hear. And he told, one thing that he told them was, um, you are the light of the world. In other words, you have to shine your light. You have to do things that are pleasing to God, okay? And, and that will show other people around you how you love God if you do that, okay? So that was the Sermon on the Mount. That was last time. And then today we're going to talk about the centurion, his servant, the centurion's servant. I'm going to read it to you from the Bible today, and then we'll go back and talk about it a little bit, okay? Our lesson is found in the book of Matthew. I'm going to have to hold it down kind of like this so Miss Bev can see. It's found in the book of Matthew in chapter 8, okay? If mom and dad want to help you find Matthew chapter 8, that would be good. Starts in verse 5. When he had come, he's talking about Jesus. When he had come, had entered Capernaum, 
A centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. I'm not good enough to have you come to my house, Jesus. But only say the word and, your, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the centurion was healed at that very moment. So let's talk about this just a minute, okay? So we have the centurion right here. We have a picture of the centurion. And this is his servant laying on the bed. Can you see him laying on the bed? Um, and he, the centurion up here goes to Jesus and he tells Jesus, he says, my servant is paralyzed. He, he can't walk. He can't feel anything down here in his body. And he is in great pain. And Jesus, what did Jesus tell him? He said, I will go with you and heal, heal your servant. And remember what the centurion said? He said, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. In other words, I'm not good enough to have you here, at my, to have you at my house. If you will just say the word, be healed, I know he will be healed. Do you think that the centurion believed that Jesus could heal his servant? He did, didn't he? That's called faith. The centurion had faith that he could that Jesus could heal his servant, okay? And so Jesus told the crowd that was around him, he said he had never seen anyone with as much faith that believed as much as this centurion did. And Jesus told the centurion, he said, go your way, go, in other words, go back home, and what you have believed will have happened, will happen. Um, and so the centurion went back home, and do you know what he found? He found his servant that was not paralyzed anymore. Jesus had healed his servant. Can you do that? Can you make somebody who can't feel their body at all, can you make it where they can feel their body again? No, I can't do that either. That's called a miracle, guys. Jesus did a miracle. Miss Bev can't do a miracle. Um, Gabriel can't do a miracle. Sarah can't do a miracle. Carter can't do a miracle. Libby can't do a miracle. Um, Savannah can't do a miracle. Madison can't do a miracle. Callie cannot do a miracle. Vivi cannot do a miracle. And Graham cannot do a miracle. None of us can do miracles. But Jesus can do miracles, can't he? This was a miracle that he did. Okay, so remember that. We can't do miracles. Mommy or daddy can't do miracles either. Um, or your nanas or your grandmas or mama bibs or anybody. None of us can do miracles, but Jesus can do miracles. All right. Okay, let's pull out your worksheet that looks just like this. It has... The centurion's servant at the top, and it's lesson 120. So pull that out. And what do you do with it to start with? You put your name at the top. So I'm gonna put my name right over on this side. Mrs. Bev. Just like that. Okay. All right. After you put your name at the top, I'm going to explain this to you. You've done these before, so this is not anything new, but um, I'm just going to explain it to those who are in here for the first time for Bible class. Your questions are over on this side, number one, two, three, four, five, six. These are your questions, and your answers are over in the brown box, okay? So you're going to draw a line from the number over to the correct word answer on the other side, 
All right, let me see if I can scoot over this way just a little bit, get closer. Okay, here we go. Number one, a commander in the Roman army was called a, what was the man called that we talked about today? He was the boss of a hundred soldiers. Do you remember what he was called? He was called a centurion. Okay, so draw a line from number one over to the, the middle C word right here. The middle C word. And then I'll put a circle around it just like that. Okay. All right, then put your pencil on number two or your marker, whatever you're using. Jesus was in where? Where was Jesus when the centurion came to him? I only mentioned this at the first of the lesson, so you may not remember, but he was in a place called Capernaum. Say that with me, Capernaum. It's kind of a funny name, isn't it? Yeah. So draw a line from number two over to the other C word that's right below it. Okay, just like that. Okay, number three, put your pencil on number three. The centurion came to Jesus because he was worried about his, who was he worried about? Do you remember? He was worried about his servant who was paralyzed and in pain. So number three, the word servant is the very last word in the brown box at the bottom, okay? So draw a line from number three over to the very last red word. Just like that. Okay, now let's look at number four. Did the centurion believe that he was good enough for Jesus to come to his house? Did he think he was good enough? No. So draw a line from number four up to the word N-O and circle it just like that. N-O, right there. Number five, put your pencil on number five. Did the centurion believe that Jesus could heal his servant? He did, didn't he? So draw a line, so up to the, the answer for this one is yes, Y-E-S. So draw a line from number five up to the Y-E-S. Just like that. This word right up here. Okay, and the last one, number six. The commander of the army showed great, what was it called that he had? He believed, the, cent, the centurion believed that Jesus could heal his servant, didn't he? Do you remember what that's called? He had great faith, faith, faith. So the answer to number six is the very top word in the brown box. So draw a line from number six up to the very top word like that and circle it. Good job, guys. Okay, I don't think you're gonna be able to do this. Um, you can say it to mom or dad. Um, you're probably not going to be able to, to write them uh, because you, most of you just can't write yet, but you will learn. You'll learn probably this year in school and kindergarten, you'll learn to write and read some. But this says, this is part of the 12 Apostles song. It says, Jesus called them one by one. Peter, and then there's a blank. Who comes after Peter? Peter, Andrew, James, and, and then there's another blank. Who comes next? Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Next came Philip, Thomas to Matthew and Bartholomew. So I know you can't write that more than likely, and that's okay. That's okay. If you wanted to sing it, that's fine. Okay? All right. And then we have your lesson sheet. It looks like this. Okay? I want you to put on your listening ears. This is the one that Miss Bev messes up on sometimes. I mess up on it sometimes, so you have to put on your listening ears to see if you, to see if you can catch me. Okay? While Jesus was in Capernaum, a woman came... A woman who was a centurion came to Jesus. A woman? No, it's a man who was a centurion, right? Came to Jesus. A centurion was a commander in the Roman army. He knew that Jesus could heal the sick and raise the dead. 
the centurion told Jesus that his servant had a cold. Did the centurion tell Jesus that his servant had a cold? <laughs> no, that's silly. The centurion didn't tell Jesus that his servant had a cold. What did he tell him? He told him that his servant was paralyzed, didn't he? And in a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, when Jesus told the centurion that he would come to his house and heal the, the servant, the centurion told Jesus that he was not worthy to have Jesus in his home. He knew that Jesus could heal the servant by simply saying, be healed. Jesus did that and healed the servant. Jesus had never seen anyone with that much faith. So the centurion had a lot of faith. He believed that Jesus could, do, could heal his servant, didn't he? And that was called faith, boys and girls. When you believe in something, when we believe in God, when we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we have faith. Because we've never seen God, have we? I've, I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus. But I believe that God exists, and I believe that Jesus exists. That's called having faith. Because I see all the things around me that God created. Okay? Okay, guys, I hope you had a good time today. I loved having you in Bible class. I can't wait to see you next time. Remember what the important things are that you're supposed to do. Be kind. Be kind to everyone that you see. And obey Mommy and Daddy. Those, that's what God expects you to do. Okay, guys? Miss Bev loves you. You have a great day. Bye-bye.